Are you wondering what brush pens to get for hand lettering? You're in the right place. I had this idea to make a video with every large brush pen I own. Halfway through, I realized what a big project that was turning out to be. So for anyone who's ever asked to see all the pens I own, this is for you. In my last video, I shared an inventory of my small brush pens, and now we're moving on to large brush pens. In this inventory, I'll be looking at my pens to decide which ones I still love and which ones I don't need to keep anymore. Let's get into large brush pens. So actually, I put my large brush pens in two categories, medium and large. Let's start with medium brush pens. These ones tend to be a little easier to control, and we'll talk more about that as we get into each pen. If you're wondering where to even start, check out my complete guide of all the brush pens I recommend and where to buy them. I'll leave that in the description below. The first ones are Kurataki Furubiori. Okay, let me tell you how amazing these were the first time I used them. So I had been trying to letter with Tombow Dual brush pens and if you tried those, you may know that they're a little harder to control. When I tried these Furubiori, I thought all of a sudden, I actually do know how to hand letter and it doesn't look too bad. The thing about these Furubiori is that because the nib is a little bit shorter, it makes it easier to control. And I've learned that's the magic of medium brush pens. So honestly, I would highly recommend any of the medium brush pens to beginners. I first got my Kurataki Furubiori from Jet Pens and you can choose individual colors there. There are a few different sets on Amazon, including metallic colors, and they're all great. Next are Edding 1340 brush pens. These ones are from Germany, but I found them on Amazon. I think I heard about these from someone on my international pen video. These are so great. The bounce is really good quality and the tip is a nice firm tip that feels like it won't fray right when you use it. I definitely recommend these if they're easy for you to find. I decided that since I have lots of medium brush pens that have even more color options that I like, I'm going to offer these to my email subscribers. It's hard to get rid of really good quality pens, so it feels a little easier if they'll go to someone who can appreciate how good they are. Here we have the Karen Dosh Fibralo brush pen. I only have the black one. I think I got it from Jet Pens because they have them in individual colors. You can get the full set with lots of colors on Amazon as well. This brush pen has such a good bounce. It's easy to control with that smaller tip and I love how it makes my lettering feel but I might have to send it on because I have other black medium tip pens that I love just the same. Moving forward, we have the Faber-Castell Pit Artist brush pens. These ones are really great quality. The tip is skinnier than the other medium brush pens. It has a great bounce. It's a little more of a firm tip, not soft. Some people prefer softer, but I love the firm tip of these. They are also waterproof, which means they're a little more expensive than other medium brush pens. But if you're looking for brush pens to splurge on that are going to last a long time, these are a great choice. Faber-Castell has so many different colors. They have different sets of colors. And like I said, they're gonna be more expensive, but they are worth the cost in my opinion since they are such great quality. I like to buy them individually, either from Jet Pens or Blick or my local art store where I used to live had all of them available. And I am definitely keeping these ones. They're expensive, but they'll last a long time. And the next medium brush pens are the Stabilo Pen 68 brush pens. I originally purchased the 10 pack of these a few years ago, and then Stabilo sent me the 24 pack to try out. These pens have such a great bounce. I've only heard people loving these. If you've tried them, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I think these are probably my favorite medium brush pens, but they're not waterproof. If that's important to you, you can use them more like watercolor. The 24 set comes with a few neon colors. Since I don't need two of some of the colors, I think I'll send off my original 10 pack so someone else can try these. Although my first black one is getting a little frayed because I've used it so much in the past couple of years. So maybe I'll throw in the Fibralo for the black with this set so somebody's not getting my frayed pen. And I really hope someone can appreciate how good these are. All right, time to move on to my large brush pens. Of all my categories, I probably have the most of these, so get comfortable. Here we go. 
The first pens I'll talk about are my Karen markers. These are my personal favorite brush pens of all my pens. They are more expensive, but they're absolutely worth it in my opinion. I had the first box they made and then they sent me a new set when they added the neon colors. And I've made my own color palette with these 14 colors right here. These 14 pens have gotten the most use of any pens that I have. They even made it on the cover of my book, Handlettering for Beginners. And not only are they my favorite to letter with, they're also super beautiful to photograph. Karen Markers also came out with these pigment deco brush markers. They're the same brush tip, but the ink is pigment based. So they're like acrylic paint brush pens as opposed to the original, which are more like watercolor brush pens. The reason these are my favorite brush markers is because the brush tip is so nice. It's firm and bouncy. For a large brush pen, it's much easier to control than some other large ones. And they're so juicy, so they work great as watercolor. Although you definitely have to use thicker paper so they don't bleed through. So if you want something to use with thin paper, these are not the ones. But it's like two in one because I use these more than pulling out my watercolors. As for comparing the two types of pens, I definitely use the regular ones the most because I lean towards watercolor over acrylic. But if you want to letter on lots of different surfaces or maybe darker surfaces like black, the pigment brush pens are great. So like I said, I had two sets of Karen brush markers over the years. I've given some duplicates away to people learning to letter. These are the ones that I have left. So I'm going to offer these to my newsletter subscribers. This would be a great set to try them out and see if you like them and want to get the complete set. All right, here's all the rest of my large brush pens I currently have. It's crazy to think that this isn't even all the ones I've had in the past since I've decluttered so many of them. But even this amount right here is too much. So let's start with the easy ones. First is the Sharpie stained brush pen. This is actually a fabric marker, so it is permanent, but it works so well as a brush pen. I only have the black one because it only comes in neon colors and I don't usually use neon colors, but this pen is the closest pen I have to Karen markers. That's how good it is. Next is the Faber-Castell Big Brush Pen. I got this in black just to try it, but I honestly like the regular Faber-Castell brush pens better. This brush tip is good, but it's not as bouncy, but I am keeping it because it's one of my few waterproof large brush pens. Now we have the Zebra Mild Liner brush pens. These are up there in my favorites, a close second to Karen markers. I have all the colors and I've made my own color palette just like I did with the Karen markers. I have a few extras since I recently had to replace some of the colors that I use constantly. The colors are more mild, hence the name Mild Liner. They are also a little more transparent like highlighters. I accidentally wasn't recording when I swatched these colors, so I just wanted to show how they write. These brush pens have a really great brush tip. It's softer than Karen markers, but easier to control than Tombow. I also love the dual tip. I highly recommend these to a beginner or a pro if you like the mild colors. These are the Winsor & Newton watercolor markers and they're so nice, but don't get these confused with the Winsor & Newton brush markers. I've purchased those by mistake and they have a really floppy brush tip and they're alcohol based, which bleeds through everything. But the watercolor markers are the perfect brush tip. Seriously, it's so nice and has just the right bounce. They also have a fine tip, but in my experience, the felt of the fine tip frays really quickly, so I wouldn't get them just for that. But they are pigment based instead of dye based, which means they'll more likely be light fast. So that's really great. It's like having Winsor & Newton watercolor, but in a brush tip. They are much more expensive, possibly my most expensive individual brush pens that I have. They have sets you can get, but I've just gotten them individually from Blick online and in store. I'm definitely keeping these ones because I do really love them. These next ones are also watercolor. These are the Equaline brush pens. Equaline has great liquid watercolors, so these are the same watercolors but in marker form. The brush tip is really soft. It has a good bounce, but it does take more control because it's so soft. 
Some people prefer the softer tip and you have to figure out which one you like better. I've only ever gotten individual colors, so I don't have a complete set of colors that I love, but I never prioritized getting the whole set because I reach for my other brush pens first. So I will be sending these on to my newsletter subscribers. Hopefully someone will enjoy trying them. If you want to know more details of when I'll be offering all of these pens, sign up for the lettering library below and you'll get my weekly emails with all the details. Now, these are the Dom's brush pens. These are from India, but I found them on Amazon a few years ago. The last time I checked, I couldn't find them on Amazon anymore. I have a full review video on these, but in short, I really like them. The tip feels soft like Ecoline and it bounces back just right. I used them for watercolor and they were so vibrant. So I need more time to really use these before I decide if I'm ready to send them on or not. Next, we have the Kiritaki Sig Brushables. These ones are so great, but not as popular because I think they're harder to find. I bought the whole set at Hobby Lobby in 2016 when I first started, but Hobby Lobby doesn't sell them anymore. I've seen some sets on Amazon. They're more expensive because they are waterproof and pigment based, which means they're more likely to be light fast so they won't fade. They are dual ended, but with a brush tip on both sides. The brush tip is firm and bouncy and it's so perfect. They've lasted me for six years so far, so that's much longer than a lot of my pens. I'm definitely keeping these and I highly recommend them if you can find them since they are harder to find. Here's another pen from India. These are Camlin brush pens. I had so many requests to review these because apparently in India these are like the Crayola equivalent because they're so cheap. I found them on Amazon, but just like the Doms, I'm not always able to find them. They are great quality for the price, but they are really soft, probably even softer than Ecoline brush pens. But if you can learn to control the soft brush tip, you'll be in good shape when you move on to other brush pens. I will not be keeping these ones since I have a lot of other large brush pens that can do the same thing. Okay, these ones are a little crazy. These are the Crafty Clownfish brush pens I got for my cheapest brush pens video. That video still has the most views of any other video on my channel. And I have no idea why, because these are not good brush pens. It was like less than $10 for a set of 40 or something like that. I only kept these few colors that I liked the best. This brand isn't available anymore, but there are tons of these types of brush pens. It's a generic pen that a brand sticks their name on. You can tell when they have the same pen body with the ridges, you'll start noticing it with a bunch of generic brands. And the brush tip is soft, not bouncy. It doesn't bounce back and it frays so quickly. A lot of these are frayed and I only used them once. I did like these colors though. I made this one piece for my video years ago and I thought it was so cute. So I kept these for the colors, but I haven't used them since. These ones I wouldn't give to anyone who actually wants to letter. So I'm going to put them in my daughter's craft cupboard and we'll see if she likes them. And on to the next ones. These are the Artline Sticks brush markers. I have two sets because the ones on the right were my first ever brush pens way back from 2016. They're pretty much all frayed because I didn't use good paper and I used them so much. I feel a little bit nostalgic about them, so it's been hard to get rid of them. You never forget your first, right? They definitely have the most creative pen body because they're like Legos. You can stack them together. Some people have told me that bothers them because it's uncomfortable while they're lettering. I could definitely see how that might be a problem after lettering for a while with them. It's not the smoothest in your hand. The brush tip is firm, not super bouncy, but they're better quality than some. I don't really reach for them, but I can't get rid of them because I'm still nostalgic for them. But one thing I've learned over the last couple of years of letting go and decluttering is that if you're not ready to get rid of something right now, you will be when it's time to let go. The goal is not to get rid of everything so you have nothing. The goal is to have your enough and find out what your enough is. You want to make space to have more of the things that really light you up and bring value to your life. 
I will be getting rid of the frayed set. I'm going to put those ones in my daughter's craft cupboard. So I don't care if she destroys them like some kids do. All right, now we have my pens that are trying to be Tombow dual brush pens. We're almost through all of my large brush pens. I promise we can do it. I saved the hardest for last. First, let's look at these Artist Loft brush pens. This is the Michaels brand. They feel really similar to Tombow. So if you're at Michaels and you like the price of these better than Tombow, I say go for it. And once again, I didn't realize that I wasn't recording, so we'll just move through this fast. I'm not going to keep these because I don't need so many pens that do the same thing, but they are great quality if you are looking for something like Tombow Dual Brush Pens. Next, we have Amazon Basics Brush Pens. I have a full review video on these. I think these are great, and I actually like the brush tip better than Tombow. It's skinnier, which somehow makes it bouncier or something, so it's a little easier to control. However, I don't love supporting Amazon making a copy. So if you don't mind that, these are a great alternative to Tombow, but I do have other pens I like better, like the Zebra Mild Liner brush pens that I would recommend over these and over Tombow. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with these ones. They're great. I just have a lot of great brush pens. Finally, here are the Tombow Dual brush pens, and I only have one more set of brush pens after this, so we've almost made it. Thanks for sticking it out with me. I found this Galaxy set at Ross for $7, so that's the thing about Tombow. Yes, they are more expensive, but you can find them on great deals. Or you can use your coupon at Michael's. The cost is not so out of reach, in my opinion. I have some random sets I've gotten and some individual colors because they're pretty easy to find. I like Tombow Dual brush pens, but they're not my favorite just because the tip isn't as bouncy as I like and it's a little softer. That and the fact that it's really long makes it pretty hard to control for a beginner. But if you can learn to control it, you will do great with other brush pens. I've also found in my experience, some of the colors tend to fray quickly, which seems like it shouldn't do that for the cost. I always love having the fine tip in the same color as the brush tip. I think one of my problems is that there are too many color options. Total, they have over 100 colors. Just like with my Karen markers and my Zebra Mild Liners, I like to narrow it down to more like 12 colors and choose the color palette so I don't have to choose new colors every time. But I haven't done that with these ones yet for some reason. They are my favorite for galaxy lettering, if you've seen my videos on that. The colors just work the best for galaxy lettering. So I'm going to keep these and maybe make a color palette and see if I'll use them more. Can you believe it? We've made it to the last large brush pens. These are the Marvy Color and Brush Markers. I love these ones. You can see I've made my color palette that I like to use, but I was torn on what to do with the rest of them that I never use because these pens are really great. They're not as popular as other pens, but the brush tip is so good. It's really bouncy. It's a large bounce, so it's great for chunky styles. If you really like thick downstrokes and really thin upstrokes, these are the pens for you. They are the best chunky brush pens I've ever found by far. They bounce so smoothly. They come in sets of 10 and there are four different sets, so 40 total and I have all of them. I used to see them in stores more, but I think now the best place to find them is Amazon or the Marvy website. If you know of other good places to find them, let me know. I'm going to keep the colors that I love, of course, and then I'm going to offer the rest of these colors to my newsletter subscribers, and I hope someone else can enjoy how amazing and chunky these brush pens are. Wow, we made it. <laughs> Here is the playlist with my other inventory videos. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you there.